so now anesthesia machine so we have seen that sources of gases can be central supply or can be cylinders can be cylinders now central supply there will be a central supply room and through this central supply there will be a bank of cylinders and from there I told you through these pipes so say these are the pipes through these pipes gases will be delivered to anesthesia machine so cylinders may be part of central supply or cylinders I told you may can be directly attached to anesthesia machine so cylinders may be part of central supply or cylinders may be part of anesthesia machine attached to anesthesia machine so anyway gases through central supply or through cylinders is delivered to anesthesia machine now what happens to these gases anesthesia machine how these gases are processed in anesthesia machine that we are going to discuss in this section so anesthesia machine how the gases actually flows in anesthesia machine so here just now I am drawing the outline of the anesthesia machine so that you can understand it better so just what I am drawing here is just an outline of the anesthesia machine outline of the anesthesia machine I am drawing here so don't go by my drawing it's really horrible it's not like that that everything is straight but here it's looking haphazard it's not like that so this is just an outline of the anesthesia machine fine so cylinders or center supply will be applied here or positioned here or attached here and the portion of the anesthesia machine where gases or cylinders are fitted or center supply is fitted called a yoke now say this is yoke for oxygen and say this is yoke for nitrous oxide so obviously oxygen cylinder or center supply will be attached here nitrous oxide center supply or cylinder will be attached here but the pressure in cylinders or even center supply is very high if you give too much pressure 2000 psi pressure can blast everything even 60 is a very significant pressure so obviously pressure has to be reduced so there are two pressure reducing valves pressure reducing valve 1 and pressure reducing valve 2 so first one will reduce the pressure to 50 to 60 psi and second reduce it to 15 to 30 psi now certain machines if gases are coming through central supply depends every uh, company has different models so what do they do if the gases are coming from central supply then they will be directly attached to second stage pressure reducing valve and these pressure reducing valves have got many names primary pressure regulator secondary pressure regulator pressure regulating valve one pressure regulating valve two so many different names anyway so because there is no role of first stage pressure reducing valve in in the gases coming from sanitary supply because they are already coming at 60 so they are directly most often in the all modern machines they are directly attached to the second stage which will reduce it to 15 to 30 psi after this much of the pressure reduction each of this gas will pass through a flow meter tube which is specific for each gas now say this is a flow meter tube for oxygen and say this is a flow meter tube for nitrous oxide and say this is a flow meter tube for air similarly so obviously oxygen will pass through its flow meter tube and similarly nitrous oxide after passing through two stage pressure reducing valve of course will pass through its flow meter tube and this flow meter tubes has a flow control knob by rotating this knob clockwise or anti-clockwise you can increase or decrease the flow through these flow meter tubes and to be on the safer side they have made this flow control knobs also color coded so it will be white for nitrous uh, white for oxygen blue for nitrous oxide black for air so that by mistake say you want to open 
oxygen and you open nitrous oxide so that visual confusion, visual error does not occur so that they have made these flow control knobs also color coded. And these tubes were first time described by the scientist Thorpe's tube. So they used to be called as Thorpe's tube. However, nowadays they are just called as uh, flow meter tubes. And these flow meter tubes you can see are conical. They are narrow at the base and wider at the apex. Narrow at the base and wider at the apex. So, and why it is so, why they are not straight? So that they can accommodate more flows at the top. Otherwise, what will happen? If I make this tube to become straight, then the height of machine will significantly increase. So, we have made it conical so that they can accommodate more flows at top. And these are the glass tubes having markings indicating flow in liters per minute. Similarly, there will be markings for nitrous oxide also. And of course, there will be marking for air also. Now, these are glass tubes, but still you cannot see the gas flowing through them. So, you have, but you have to be very sure, yes, gases are, are, are in continuous flow. So, for that, what they have done? They have placed a aluminium structure into each of these tubes. And this aluminium structure is called as bobbin. Similarly, there will be of course bobbin for nitrous oxide or bobbin for air. Now, how does this bobbin work? In its upper rounded part, there are cuts here. In its upper rounded part, there are cuts. So, what will happen when a gas pass all around this bobbin? All around this bobbin, due to these cuts, it will make the bobbin to rotate. And if bobbin is continuously rotating, that means your gas flow is continuous. If bobbin is rotating, that means gas is continuously flowing. And that is how actually you set the flow rate sold flow. So it is the upper level of the bobbin which determines the flow rate, not the middle level or lower level. So if I ask you, and this they have asked also two, three times that which part of the bobbin uh, determines the flow rate. So it is the upper level of the bobbin which determines the flow rate. So in our case, if you ask me what is the flow rate of oxygen, 6 liter, upper level of the bobbin, not the mid or the lower level. Similarly, if I ask you flow rate of air, it's 3 liter, upper level of nitrous oxide, 4 liter, upper level of the bobbin. Now, if you want to increase the flow, of course, you rotate this knob, more gas will come and bobbin will go up. If you want to reduce the flow, rotate this knob, otherwise bobbin will come down. And that is how you determine the flow rate. And this whole unit, this whole unit containing different flow meter tubes and flow control knobs is called as a rotameter. So this whole unit containing different flow meter tubes and flow control knobs is called as rotameter. And why it is called rotameter? because it has rotating bobbin in it. After the name of this rotating bobbin, it is called as rotameter. Then another important thing about rotameter that you should know, which has been asked, uh, I think, few, three, four years back in AIMS also, that what should be the arrangement of these tubes in rotameter? Can I place nitrous oxide here instead of oxygen? No. Why? But can I place air in place of nitrous oxide and nitrous oxide in place of air? Yes, I can. Means the principle is that oxygen tube should be the last tube. Last tube means tube near to the machine outlet. So this is machine outlet. Or other words, you can say oxygen tube should be most downstream. This is upstream, starting from here, going in this direction till here. So it is downstream. So oxygen should be most downstream. Why? You know that when two tubes meet with each other at perpendicular angle, there are maximum chances of leakage. Like when this glass tube, this glass tube 
meet this steel tube here this is steel tube at top and this is glass tube so when these two tubes meet these points become points of leakage now say if i say this is your oxygen tube for example so if there is any leakage here oxygen will leak if there is a leakage here oxygen will leak and when oxygen is passing here if there is a leakage it will leak here then oxygen going here it will leak here it can leak here it can leak here means oxygen can leak at six points but if this is a oxygen tube then the possibility of leakage will be only at two points so that is why oxygen should be the most downstream gas in rotameter so finally all these gases they will all these gases they will combine at the top of the machine and from there they pass through an instrument that is called as vaporizer so vaporizer is the instrument which contains inhalational agent so your inhalational agent can be anything halothane isofluorane desfluorane sevofluorane now say this is inhalational agent so these inhalational agent or volatile agent they are called as volatile agents why they are called volatile because they are vulnerable for evaporization they are they can be evaporated so when a gas mixture will pass over this liquid due to the pressure of this gas it, they will get evaporated and this evaporated particles will mix with this gas mixture and final mixture will be delivered from machine outlet at a pressure of 5 to 8 psi and that was i think question in neat as recently that what is the final delivered pressure of anesthesia gases to the patient that is 5 to 8 psi imagine here in cylinder it was 2000 pounds per square inch and what patient is receiving is 5 to 8 psi so and the final mixture which is coming from machine outlet usually consist of 75 percent nitrous oxide or air and why some people prefer air instead of nitrous oxide that we'll discuss later plus 25 percent oxygen and one of the inhalational agent or volatile agent so this is a very important fact that you should know that whatever it happens oxygen concentration should never be allowed to fall below 25 percent and this they have asked number of times also that what is the minimum concentration of oxygen what should be the optimal concentration of oxygen what should be the ideal concentration of oxygen so whatever it happens oxygen concentration should never be allowed to fall, fall below 25 percent otherwise patient can develop hypoxia and there are many mechanisms like different companies are using different uh, uh, mechanisms to ensure that oxygen is never delivered less than 25 percent one of a very important or a basic system is oxygen nitroxide proportionator so what they have done simply they have connected these oxygen and nitrous oxide pulleys or knobs through a chain so these two knobs oxygen nitroxide they are connected through a chain so what will happen when you start rotating nitrous oxide automatically since it is connected to chain so it will also rotate and when you keep on increasing nitrous oxide it will also in the proportion keep on increasing so this system ensure that oxygen and nitrous oxide will always be delivered in a set proportion means you cannot deliver singular flow of nitrous oxide and that is why these systems are called as oxygen nitrous oxide proportionator because they ensure that oxygen and nitrous oxide are given in a fixed proportion.